add on my backup computer running as well. We'll get underway. Right, I'm going to go and show you a little PowerPoint briefly just to get started. Give some background because some people come and watch this cold on my YouTube channel, so they so they know what's going on. Here we go. There's also the chat at the bottom. Oh yeah, the webcams will go to the right. So if you click on the little three by three matrix, you can actually to the in the top left corner of the webcam, you can reshape them. So you can actually um, make it a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. Let's see where we are. I'll find my pen here. Here it is. It's working. Yep. Okay. So I'm Nicholas David Nan of the Center for Conscious Ascension. Welcome. Um, welcome to the webinar, How to Help Others Transmute Their Karma into Their Gifts of Service. All right, so I'll read this bit out for the guys who haven't come. So have you noticed how people turn away from the biggest karmic challenges they face in their lives? That was me most of my life. No matter how hard they've tried, it's just too painful for them to face as they lack the spiritual map of life of how to overcome them. Up to the age of about 30, I had no idea what was going on. Well, I was just waking up spiritually until I received a soul contract reading from Frank Upper, the founder of this work. And ever since then, that spiritual map of life has guided me to, to where I am now in terms of sharing this great work to the world. So we're going to talk about how you could potentially help others discover the spiritual map of life. And so they can identify their core patterns. And most importantly, how to transmute them. It's all very well known what our patterns are, but if we can't do anything with them, then it's a bit more tricky. So they can deliver their gift of service to the world because we, we all have these gifts of service as light workers. And I remember searching from that special thing from oh, when I was a... I was in early teens. I knew there was something special I was here to do, but I couldn't find it in school and university and work never told me any of these things. In fact, it didn't tell me a thing. So I thought, why, why isn't someone telling me the truth of why I'm here? So I sort of started searching for it. And um, that led me to doing the conventional thing, university, did a corporate job for a while. I was born in New Zealand. And then I decided I have to get out of this little country, I have to see the world. And that was the beginning of a really strong search for my spiritual truth and purpose. And about three years into that journey, I came across this work at a workshop in Arizona with Frank Alper, the founder of it, who channeled it through. And he gave me that reading, as I said, and that completely transformed my life. So I, I said to him, when can I learn this? And about six weeks later, he said, there's another training which will cover this work, all the basics of it. So I went to that and I thought I have to share this with the world. And um, I brought it to England and started doing readings and then started teaching um, practitioners about four years later, that was in 94. And then um, trained other teachers and it's sort of propagated globally now. So 30 odd years on, so it's been quite a journey. So I'm here to share the power of this with you. Um, of how you can transform your own life if you haven't already with it, and you can transform the life of others by sharing this work with them. Okay. All right, oh, there's some, someone's in the chat here, yeah. Okay. All right, so, uh, it's Frank Alper. So, Mariel has asked that, uh, listen, Frank Alper is the founder of this work, okay. So no, what, no matter what um, some people may say, you may come across different versions of this and some people unfortunately claim they created it. It's not true, it comes from Frank. And um, just to set the record straight. And he shared it with us and said to take it out to the world. Okay, so it's there now, Mariola. Okay. So um, let's see. So I want to find out why you guys are here now, okay? Because then that's sort of going to give me a feel for where, how we're going to pitch or where we're going to put flow with the webinar 
So if you read the book, let me know. If you've done your own chart, if you've seen, seen me on Gaia, just so I've got some background. And then also say where you are and what brought you here and what you need from this, because then I can adjust the flow depending on whatever you need. So it's very much custom the way we do this. It's different every time. So who wants to go first, Andy? If you want to go first, you've got your mic off from the freezing wastes of Atlanta. <laughs> I have my mic on, so we're ready. Yeah, sure. No, I'm from it. Yeah, from the freezing waste of Atlanta with the Iceland picture. Uh, so uh, I'm just getting into my soul contract and trying to be able to read and understand in full. Uh, and also then I can help hopefully my wife and do her reading with her and we can go with this together. And and so that's why I'm here is to learn uh, the soul contract reading process and who knows maybe it'll, it'll expand even farther than that once i get comfortable with myself and my my family okay thank you who wants to go next if you guys um who are okay lauren can go, next. To go next um so my name is lauren i'm from seattle yep. i was on the webinar on tuesday as well you're um, up early yeah, <laughs> I prepared this time to be camera ready. Yeah. Um, but yes, um, I found your work originally in 2020 when I was going through my spiritual awakening and really kind of in the dark night of the soul of like being like, what is real? I don't know what's real anymore because, you know, the idea of spirit, which I didn't really think was real. I'm, I should say I'm, I live in Seattle. I'm from uh, Oakland, California originally. So I came from a very sort of spiritual but also secular place right so it's like I really had secular beliefs and I would say I was spiritual and then I like got spiritual beliefs and I'm like okay this these are spiritual beliefs I see now um but anyway I found your book and it was so helpful and enlightening and I I reread it um at least my kind of did my chart again last month and I really am looking to you know be a practitioner of this but I'm also part of in my chart I forget I think it's the sevens where it's like you take the different pieces and you blend together so I want to, you know, sort of do this work, but I also want to incorporate, you know, astrology because I learned so much from that and saying, here's actually look at this karma and then look at that placement. That's maybe why this placement is there because that's the like manifestation of that karma. And so I want to kind of learn these and blend them. And I'm still trying to figure out how that will work, but I'm trying to see again, how to be the best practitioner of this work. Well, astrology is within the system because this work comes out of the movement of great spirit of God in the non in the non-religious sense yeah is it created creation so all the divination systems come out of this so astrology is associated with 12 of the numbers here okay so right you have the 12 star signs but you also have all the planets that are in there mm -hmm. so um it's an integral part of it so once you see it in action it will make sense but you probably look at astrology a little bit slightly differently when you see it so yeah. you can I mean, Antigone Langley, who teaches this with me, she's a she's an astrologer, so she she will teach you a lot about it um, as we go through it. But yeah, it's an integral part, and it's just another part of the lens of finding out how this how we really tick. Yeah. 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 So you won't be able to work it out just from the book. Um, right. You sort of really need the transmission on the training where we activate you into the work. Okay. Uh, the book is a subset of the training manual, the bits we can publicly put out, because some of the interpretations are very strong and you couldn't actually put them in the public, in a pub, in the public domain. You understand when you see them. Right. So you'll get the full, you get the full transmission for three days when we do it. So we it's not about most of the guy, most of you guys who come to this work have fives. One of the absolute truth of life, or eleven twos, you want, and you want the absolute structure of how things work, <laughs> which is why pretty much ninety percent of practitioners have those, or potential practitioners. Yeah, and your mind I will eleven two for <coughs> spiritual talent. There you go, you see, guaranteed. So, but soul destiny is twelve three. So yeah, well, you you want to absorb a lot of knowledge, so you're yeah. in the place. So you can spend a lot of time reading the book. Mm -hmm. learn about it but when we train you it's not about learning more about it okay. it's about becoming it which is completely different so we, we use experiential training so you spend the first three days um being transmitted 
the meaning of the numbers through giving readings of a different S22 numbers, hopefully, and you find them in each of the cl your classmates' charts. So you become it. So the astrology will be imprinted in you. So you, you become the work. So it's programmed into you and you remember it. Okay, so it's not, it's, it's, it's quite different. So your mind may not get it initially. You uh -huh. may think, well, I'm not actually getting a lot out of this. But then after three days, the first three days you do that. And the, in the last two days, on the second weekend, we split into two at this time of year. Because the California mom said, can you do two weekends so I don't have to get up? <laughs> I don't have to get up <coughs> five days in a row early. But also, I can get my partner to look after the kids. So that's why we do that. Yeah. And on the last two days, you get to practice and you discover you actually really know it well most cases because you become it awesome. okay so it's I going to be different. <laughs> it's a different process to what your mind thinks it's going to be the way we we train this but it's taken us a long time to actually um, work out how to do it okay so we don't go and read read out the manual we actually read people's names we, people talk about their life I mean, you never forget that specific pattern obviously we're looking at the manual but you're getting to feel directly what that means in someone's life. And that stays with you forever. That's the way we teach it. Okay. So Lynn's got a hand up. Thanks, Laura. Um, yes, I went through the, the book. I did my chart and I deciphered all the codes. And I found it amazing. Um, it basically explained everything that I was going through, everything I've been through. It explained, you know, I did like some of my family's chart. It, it explained everything. I mean, I felt like now I know what's going on and why it's happening, everything. So I was, I was amazed. I've, I've recommended your book. Thanks for writing it to a number of people since then. I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if they believe in it. So that's the, the thing. I guess the, the person has to be ready to receive it. Yeah, it's very black and white, the book. On Amazon, it gets either four or five stars or one or two stars. And the guys, there's nothing in the middle, hardly. I mean, guys who have one or two stars, they don't understand it. it. Makes no sense. Too complicated. And the guys who give them four or five stars, this is the best thing I've ever read on spiritual development because they were ready to hear it. They were at the level of consciousness that could handle the truth of this. This is, this is if you, those of you who read David Hawkins, he's a very famous, enlightened master really he passed away a few years ago he did he did a book called power versus force which is a classic and he has the scale of consciousness so this book is at 600 on the scale of consciousness it's pure it's pure truth okay so it's only when you're ready to hear pure truth that you can handle it otherwise um the ego will blank it out because it doesn't want the personality to hear the truth because here's the truth it blows the entire game the ego was playing and all the games over all the years are gone because the, the truth of this slices through all the ego defenses and agendas and sabotages. That's why this is so strong. Okay, so they'll either get it, learn, or they won't. <laughs> so you can't handle the truth. <laughs> yeah, so you got you got to feel are they ready to handle the truth? Um, because it's very easy to get excited because you were ready to hear the truth, but it can be a great awakening for people because. Or sometimes the ego can it can resist for a while, but you say enough truth to it, it just collapses because it can't play the can't play with this illusion of keeping you unconscious anymore. Because truth is truth is on a much higher frequency than falsehood, which is where the ego lies most of the time. Uh, hang on. Okay, I think what I need to do. So, Marielle, you're not getting it. So, I'm going to have to make an adjustment. I'm, I, I need to send it to everybody. Hang on. Uh, hang on. So, I'll resend this, Marielle. Just continue about that. So, this is power versus force. I'm sending it to everybody. Some of you guys will get it a second time. Okay. That's the main thing. And uh, my teacher, Frank Harper, who's, a, who's the founder of this, he channels from the Solar Moses. There he is here. So you should have that. Is that, is that coming through, Mariola? You have to message me. Yes. Now, yes. Thank you. Good. 
Okay, so um, who's next? Honey, honey, you got your hand up. What brought you here and where are you? Um, what brought me here is, I think I'm being naturally drawn to this. I'm from Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I do have a couple of questions. So one of them was I did my chart yeah. and yeah. I cannot figure something out. So what for me, I have... I have three things that have the same set of numbers, my spiritual karma, spiritual goals, and life purpose yeah. are all 11 twos. Right. I don't know what that means. It means you're in the right place because you're after the structure of truth. Okay. What we can do is um, we can look at the chart a little bit later. We do a little demo of how the system works and I can do your chart then, okay? Then I can okay. I need to see the rest of the chart to work it out, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, I also have a question about, well, one thing too, I know was just mentioned, if others don't believe in this, I don't speak to them about it, but there are people who definitely come in like a magnet. Um, yeah. Also, I have a question about the training. Yeah, let's just answer the first question. Um, oh, okay. People, it's the same comment as before. Uh, like on Amazon, when people either relate to the book or they don't relate to it. You, people have to be ready for this. If they're not ready, they'll just blank out on you. And it's a very difficult conversation, so don't even bother. But if someone's ready, they'll just eat it all up and they'll just be right into it because everyone's been searching for the real meaning of their life and, and the truth of why they're here. And most of the time, when they hear it, when they're ready, it, it just goes in very deeply because they realize that this is really the case and it's so accurate. Okay, so you just get a feeling to share it with somebody. Um, some people just give them the book, say, have a read of this. Um, and if they, if they really want it, if they want to, if they're into it, they'll probably read it in about 24 to 72 hours. Average read time is about 48 hours on the book because the truth is so powerful. I had one person said, I was in a New York bookstore, Nicholas. I had six other books. Your book jumped off the bookshelf. I put the other books down. Completely forgot about them. Took yours home. Finished at four in the morning. Couldn't stop. I had to find out about myself. So that person's ready. Okay, so you never know who's ready. Right, exactly. That's, that's how it happens for me, except they yeah. got uh, the book online. Um, yeah. I have another question is... Yeah rhetorically how does the person know when they've learned the lesson um it stops the, the karmic the karmic challenge of a particular one of the seven aspects stops coming at you okay you no longer have to deal with the same old stuff around that particular issue and by that stage the soul has gone on to something else because the soul is actually um i'll pull up the presentation here what the soul is doing, I'll just share the screen. What it's aiming to do, if I can put my pen, so we just started able to decode the numbers. <coughs> the soul is actually aiming for you to work through all these six outer aspects in the Star of David, which we use to decode your name. Okay, and over time, time is this way. This is percentage complete. If someone is conscious of what their contract is, then they're going to work on spend eighty percent of their effort on twenty percent of things that matter out of the, each of the aspects. So the soul might have, say, two of them, two or three of them running strongly for you at any given time. Sometimes just one, and the rest of these are more dormant, even though it's ticking over slowly. And then when it feels you've actually worked through enough of this one, it's like, okay, let's have a bit of this one. Let's have a bit of spiritual gold. We'll trigger that for a few weeks or months. Okay, so when something's not in your face, that means that layer of it's done, but it might come back to you later. So don't assume just because it's not there at the moment, it's it's not there. It, it, can, it can repeat. Let me find a diagram. And if it repeats, it doesn't mean you missed out the first time. It just means you've gone to a deeper level of that program. I'm looking for a specific chart here to show you about it. Here it is. Here it is. It's in the book. OK. 
Okay, so this is stupid. This is in the book. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Say this is a particular number. Say this is a three, which is depending on whether to be loved. Just the frequency in the system. And the stupa is about uh, growing in consciousness. And so you travel around it and you hit a you hit this point here with the three and you feel unworthy. And you, as you grow, another layer comes out, you hit it again. But as you go up the stupa, the layers get finer and finer. It gets a bit easier every time to clean out the layer. So this you, you've got like seven of these guys running on your contract. And different you'll be they're making different. You've got different speeds and you'll clear, clear a different rate on each one. So the main thing is to focus on what is in your, what's up in your face at the moment and just do your best to bring consciousness to it and clear it. Um, and yes, you may feel it's cleared, but don't feel bad if it turns up again, because it just means you've just done another round of the stupor. But just work with each thing that comes up. Okay, so thank you. Can I still... Can I still ask a few more questions? Um, maybe can we can wait until we've, we've had everyone sure. else introduce themselves and we can get into more questions, okay? Okay, thank I, you. I want to give a bit more structure to uh, for the guys who are not so familiar with us who may be listening later. Okay, who else would like to introduce themselves? Be good to know who you are if you're up for it or even if you put it on the chat, that's fine. No one else? Okay, all right, so let's get back up to uh, yeah, let's go back up to here. Where are we? So So our karma. Our biggest challenges contain our gift of service here. Okay. <coughs> so with our karmic patterns, there's two laws which operate, the law of attraction and the law of opposites. That's the one they didn't tell you about. So initially, when we start out in life, our karmic patterns are running very strongly and we are getting the opposite of what we're to become as a result of that. And we're attracting some pretty unpleasant stuff, as you probably all know. Okay, so we get the karmic challenges initially, which then trigger us to say, well, I don't like this. I want to, I, and we tend to move away from things which we don't like, which are causing us pain. And so what it's doing is the soul's directing you to move in a certain direction. Like if you're very disempowered, say with nines in your chart, it's getting you to move into the direction of empowerment, getting you to move out of the direction of feeling like a victim of life. Okay. And that becomes your gift of service. So to move from disempowerment to empowerment. So you move from a negative expression, you've got the opposite of what you wanted, and your soul, your soul wants to go to the place of empowerment. Okay. So you attract you attract disempowering experiences, and as you transmute that disempowerment, you become empowered over here. <coughs> so None of the hard stuff we face is meant to defeat us. It's just there is a learning process that our soul creates through the contract. Okay. But most people get stuck down here, all right? And they never get to the gift of service, so they sort of get to their middle age and they feel very frustrated and unhappy, okay? Especially those who are not on a path. It's very slow to grow otherwise. So how do we, how do we help people? How do we help spiritual seekers? Well, you guys are the answer to this if you're interested. Training to become a reader will allow you to decode the spiritual map of life, the, the secret of the, blue, of the blueprint of your life, which is hidden in their birth name. The soul, through the frequencies of the birth name, creates you the law of, the law of attraction every moment of your life, or their life, in this case. And so it designs the frequencies very specifically. It chooses the right time zone, parents, genetic structure, life experiences. And it's all encompassed in that name. <coughs> Once they know 
that realize this name creates every moment of the reality, what happens then is that, um, what happens then is that they become empowered because when people realize, hey, the, the universe, the matrix is not dumping on me, I'm actually creating this. The next thing people think is, if I'm creating it, therefore, there must be some way of changing it. I can change this life. And it's a big light bulb moment for most people. Because once they have the spiritual map of life, that means they can become empowered, which is what this work is about, to overcome their karma, which is the, what brings people to the work. Okay, Because usually they're having a big karmic challenge and they turn up at your doorstep or your digital doorstep saying, Lauren, please help me. It's got really bad. Or, or and or, they come because I need to know my life purpose. I've tried everything else. I heard about the system. I want to know why I'm really here because I, you know, they're in their 50s. I'm running out of time. I want to get on with it. Or they're younger. I want to want to get on with it. Helps them express their talents, achieve their goals. And most importantly, manifest their soul or life purpose. We call it soul destiny in the system. That's why they turn up. And you can deliver this to people. So the way it works is that um, we decode. Actually, we'll, we'll just go to um, Honey. It was you who wanted the name? We're going to do the name with. Can you switch on the mic? Oh yes, go ahead. Yeah. Can we? Do, are you okay for your name to be shown publicly? Um. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So this is the soulcontractreader.com software. Let's see, you can. Most of you are probably used to this. So, honey, what's your current name? My current name is not my birth name. I know that, but we need to put a label on the system. So it's honey. Oh, and last name is um, Steele, S-T-E-E-L-E. -E. Okay. And what's your birth name? Honey, um, and the last name is Silverman. Can you spell it for me, please? S-I-L-V-E-R-M-A-N. Okay, is, is, is your middle name? Barbara, and that's B A. It's B A R B A R A. I won't put your birth date in because um, the data security. You happy for me to analyze this chart? Sure. Okay, so we're going to put this on the system. Okay, this saves us a lot of time. There you go. And it's very, it's, it's completely accurate when we do it this way as well. So the way the system works, it's easy to show with a chart. Actually, I should be get a drink of water. I just realized I left my water bottle outside. Be just a sec. Sorry about that, I need to drink, I'm doing a lot of talking. So what we do is that we first convert your name, honey, into equivalent Hebrew sounds here. These 22 ancient Hebrew frequencies come out of the movement of great spirit. We match them, some of them are multiple, used multiple times to match the sound of the name in English. And then in those sounds, in Hebrew, numbers are inherent within it. Are you Jewish, honey? You yes. To, yeah, just yes. You leave your mic on, okay? Okay. So, um, and those, and this is the major difference between this system and conventional numerology in that the numbers are inherent within it. They aren't assigned to it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> So what we do is that we're going to decode them on the Star of David, which is like a gateway of consciousness here. And the way it works is that um, we have a large downward pointing triangle. And this is about how we create our conscious personalities, which are temporary constructs, their ego, emotional filters, so that you can experience life in a very specific way. And so you as Hani Barbara Silverman are brand new in this lifetime. You never existed before. 
whereas your souls had multiple lifetimes with different personalities and different contracts. So the physical triangle is about you getting established here on Earth, learning to walk and talk, get conditional responses, careers, kids, houses, relationships. Between the age 35 and 42, you make a transition to the spiritual triangles. It's a sixth cycle of seven years. So the first 35 years, the first five times seven, because 35 years, you spend in the physical. Sometimes this accelerates people in their 20s are moving to the spiritual already. So this transition is called the midlife crisis, dark night of the soul. So when did you make that transition, honey? When did you wake up spiritually and really question what you were doing and change direction? Um, early 40s. So you're right on time then. Okay, you're in the sixth cycle. Okay, so within each of these triangles, these three aspects, these karma, talents, and goals. And karma is a set of unresolved past life issues that we bring in to create this negative context of all the stuff we don't like. Here's a lovely nine here. I talked about it before, this is karma. And the, we overcome it by activating our latent, in this case, physical talents, if it's a good match, it'll overcome the karma, then that becomes your gift of service. So your gift of service, what you're here to do, which is what all like workers are asking, is contained in the biggest challenges you have in your life and your karma, in physical and spiritual karma. As the talents get stronger, it helps you move to the physical goals, which is what excites you about life. So you notice you've got a double five here and 11 two here and here which is why yes. you're here. you want to know the, tr the tr absolute truth and the structure of how it works. See, So, the energy flows from physical karma, to physical talents, to physical goals, and the same with the spiritual. So when you move to the spiritual predominance, and you make the transition from the physical to the spiritual triangle, the spiritual karma is how you open to higher consciousness. And you overcome that by infusing the spiritual talents into there. They get stronger. That moves you to the spiritual goals. Energy flows from here to here to here. And if you work on all six aspects, as we were saying earlier, at the beginning, consciously, what begins to happen is that the soul destiny starts to manifest layer by layer. The pace you can handle. So it's not like some big biblical slab lands on your doorstep saying, you're here to do this, honey. A layer will come that you can handle. Okay, and then when you're ready, as you progress more, another layer will come, another layer will come. For example, I, I mean, I was, I left the corporate world because I couldn't take it anymore. I knew there was something more important, which was this work about 27 years ago, 25 years ago, yeah. But um, I didn't really have a clear idea of what was going to happen. I just knew I had to, I just followed the feeling I had need to leave this, leave my corporate glass box in the city of London. And I started this business part-time initially because I was working part-time in a corporate job. And I left eventually and I was just focusing on basically trying to pay the bills and master my craft, giving readings and healing and stuff like that in London. And then and just, and starting to run trainings and things like that and this work and healing work. And then what happened was that... Um, about 2011, Spirit spoke to me. It was quite clear. It was like, it's time to write the book about this work. And this is the first I'd heard of it. But they'd been tweaking me on and off for a few years, but they said, now it's really time to do it. And they gave me very specific instructions on how to go about it. And they, they manifested the right people who helped me get the book out to the world. And so all the right people turned up and... Um, like publishing consultants and the publisher. The publisher rang me three days after I submitted the manuscript and said, okay, we want to publish this. That's unheard of. Normally it's months before we hear back from them. And then it went to number one on Amazon. And then Gaia called and it all, it all happened. It's because I was ready here. I progressed enough through my soul destiny to actually do this and something I hadn't had never thought of before. So it's very important to work with whatever's in the moment because that will take you to sort of places which are unimaginable. So your question was, was these 311 twos, wasn't it, honey? Yes, what, yes. What that means. 
Okay, let's talk about this. Well, the most important number here is this physical karmic nine. Because it's in karma, it means there's you know, a lot of disempowerment in your life. So how's that played out, honey? Um, it's pretty major. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you want to give a share a little bit about how that that is? Um, it's kind I of personal, but I can't I can't say it's literally lifelong. Except now, I'm coming into taking my life back and my own empowerment. Okay, that's the main thing. I want to see how you progress. So, as you take your life back, the dragon is unleashed. And then you'll be a catalyst to help others awaken. Okay, that's one of your big gifts is to catalyze others to awaken and trust trust their inner feeling. Is how are you doing in terms of trusting your first and a gut feel about a situation? Absolutely, rely on it. Absolutely, yeah. it always works, doesn't it? Yes. And if you ask someone else what to do and you follow that, it doesn't work, does it? Correct. Yeah, so it's trusting your own spiritual power. Okay. Spiritual talents is a 21-3. I'm still giving you a very brief reading so we can get to these 11, but I need to see the context of your life. So the 21 is about the divine mother energy. It's about learning to move this energy in you. It's in talents. So have you had to endure a lot of hardship and got quite yes. strong from that? So what was that yes. about? Was that to do with the nine, was it? It was the, um, it was everything. Like yeah. everything. Yeah. Okay. So you, do you feel really strong now? Strong enough to get yes. on with life? Yes. Okay. And the three is saying you're here to communicate with others. Communicate, share knowledge, to share deep soul wisdom from this internal canal. Potentially as some sort of a teacher of some sort. So what sort of communication activities have you been up to? Um, actually talking about these charts. Yeah. Okay. And how's that gone? People are very interested. Um, yeah. I just need to work on the interpretations and how they all interlink. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just throw one more thing in there. Yeah. My best friend, who's been my best friend for like 32 years, yeah. um, her chart is has the same 11 twos. It's probably why other you, numbers are different. That's but probably why you seem... get on because you're, you're up, both after the structure of truth, how it works. So, but when one of my friends read us for like um, tarot, as soon as we walked in the room, she said, there's a soul tie between you. Yeah. And you, I kind of always knew that. And then after I did the chart, uh, this was like 10 years ago when the person said the soul tie and our lives are very mirrored literally at the same time like the same days, the same things happen. Like we both get promoted on the same day. Yeah. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that means anything, but we're both super curious. It just means that you are following a similar path. Okay. Yeah. So some sort of communication, teaching, leading from the soul and physical goal. So can you tell him someone's not telling the truth, honey? Yes. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so the five is this pure psychic energy here. This abstract being. This is a coming abstract, abstract being coming out. It's an, it's an embryo. It's coming out of um, the fourth dimension, the astral plane, coming out of abstraction into physical form. So. So this is about having strong visions of what you could be doing here, but grounding them and turning them into reality and learn to speak the truth no matter what. Did you have your truth suppressed as a kid? Yes. Yeah. And persecution in the past, which manifests in past lives, which manifests persecution in this life. Yep. Okay. So the truth say you're here to work at the cutting edge with absolute truth, which is why you're attracted to this work. So... Let's get on to the 11 2. So, the 11 2 is all about learning and karma to take all these different concepts and ideas that come to you and throw away the stuff that doesn't resonate with you and then to build your own unique structure of truth here. 
And the two is about learning to be emotionally resilient, to support others as you share that truth as some sort of communicated teacher. Does that sound about right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you might have felt quite lost when you were younger about how things worked because you were still building your structure. Did that happen? Yes. Yeah. Are you impulsive, honey? Um, when you were younger? When I was younger, yes. Did it get you in a lot of trouble? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to share some troublesome moments? Um, I think yeah. some of them were just acting out. Um, yeah. What's yeah. happening is that you're sitting on the spring. The, the spring's moving up and down, and you're exploring the energies of foolishness to wisdom. And so if you are... Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to find the eraser. Reverse. Maybe used that before. So if you're looking at a situation and you're on the spring, as it moves up and down, your perception is going to change of what the truth of it's look about. So when something's changing on you in terms of how you perceive it, then you're not seeing the truth of it. So you need to wait till the spring's at maximum symbolic height. And then from there, you will see you'll be from the place of wisdom because you see objectively what's really going on. And because it's at the top of the, its movement, it'll be, pa it'll be paused for a while. It might, so you've got to wait till it's paused. And sometimes this pause can be a few hours, days, or weeks, or even months. And if you see something consistently like that, it's not changing, that means you're seeing the truth. And if you act from that position, rather than impulsively while it's moving, you make a wise decision. Because you huddle in wisdom, honey, to teach yes. others. The reason for three of them. And the spiritual talents here about, is about grounding. It's like an amoeba. It's a watery, emotional creature. You Are you good with relating to all sorts of people? Yes. Yeah, so this is about being able to connect with people emotionally, reach out to them with your symbolic right hand, but not getting over-involved in their issues, knowing this is my boundary and this is yours. Okay? Yep. So it's about grounding because you've got this very ungrounded five here, but another part of your spiritually is very grounded. So it's grounding the structure. So say this is yours. From what I can see here, because it's in goals and it's all destiny. <coughs> Sorry. You're here to build your own unique structure of spiritual truth and support and share it at a very high level, almost like university level. Very refined, high frequency structural truth. Share it in a grounded way, but it's going to be pioneering in the nature of the knowledge, and it's going to be very catalytic and empowering to others, the truth you're going to share. That's why you were born. How does that sound? Absolutely spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why you were born. And how far are you, how, how much progress have you made on that? I think really I've, that's always been my path. And what's kind of funny is when I did my master's, the first class of that whole track, um, they, we were asked to say why we are choosing this path. And I said that my purpose is to connect with, listen to, and um, help people as individuals or as groups to better themselves and contribute to the greater good. And I mean, that was many years ago. So as far yeah. as being a connector and listening and helping them be, whether it's like, so whether it's a single or as a group, that's, that, yeah, that's the path. So I was saying it many years ago and didn't realize that that really is my path. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, you've got it. I think you've got anyway. it. Well done. Okay, thanks for being the demo. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have any questions about that? You can put it in the chat or just switch your mic on or wave at me if you're on the video. Andy, we can't see your head. You've gone and disappeared. Do you want to move the camera up a little bit? There you go, we can see all of you now. So especially how the system works, it reveals the truth out of the, out of the birth name. And consciously working through it will really take you uh, into alignment with the soul so life becomes much more fulfilling.
Okay, Hannah, you've got some other questions saying no one else is asking questions. What were the other questions you had? Um, one of my questions is if we, I'll just say me, let's say I run into somebody who was a lover in a past life. Yeah. And they don't want to pursue anything with me romantically. Right. Why does that happen? Or what could be a meaning in that? Um, there can be strong soul recognition. I've had this myself. And, and we can get the memories out of our cellular memory. The soul puts the cellular memory from those past lives into, into this life. And the past life files open in our energy fields, which is what attracts them to us, because we might have had a pretty good time before. But it's very important to realize it's a different personality this lifetime. You both got different personalities. So it doesn't mean you're going to go off in the sunset happily ever after this life. Okay, so you, because you've got to negotiate with personalities. But the soul, strong soul connection is what attracts you to each other because there's a familiarity. Okay, so sometimes it's not meant to happen. It's just that you guys just wanted to meet up because you had a good time past two or three times or however you did it. So okay. it might be happily ever after, but it might not. So don't assume, it will not be. <laughs> yeah, just don't assume it will be. So you've got to look at realistically what's happening in this lifetime because um, there will also be memories of, hang on, some of the things that happened in the past. Let's go just the camera here. Look. So it's potential. It doesn't mean it will happen. And you know, I've met different women who I've been in relationship with in past lives and I sort of it became very clear that I'm instant familiarity it doesn't mean it's going to happen this time because it's it, there is free will choice as our personalities develop in this life and unless there's enough compatibility at an emotional level it may not happen but it may do you never know okay makes don't, total sense don't yeah. give up uh, the, the main thing is to focus on um someone being compatible enough who's going to grow with you spiritually. That's a very important thing. They want, they must want to grow with you because we're accelerating at a very, at a very fast rate um, in consciousness. And if they can't keep up, we men are a bit slow. If we can't keep up, if he can't keep up with you, okay, then you'll grow apart. Okay. That's the key thing. So it's got to be a willingness to that's literally what's happened. Yep. Yeah. I've got to find a diagram of that. There's a diagram here somewhere. Um, down here somewhere. There it is. Here's how this works. So as you, this is David Hawkins, scale of consciousness. So... And this is the logarithmic scale from 20, which is shown. 200 is about level of integrity. Below this, people are in really heavy, dark emotions, and they won't do what they say they'll do. And as far as we're concerned, it's like because they're lying all the time to themselves and the world. That's a bit harsh, but that's actually what happens, not telling the truth. Above 200, this is where you guys are. You're moving around here, like joy, unconditional love, truth or peace, love, the mind can go to reason is the most. And this is a higher level of consciousness. So if you're here and your partner's here, you must have an overlap, an overlap um, for things to work. Otherwise, there's nothing to connect to. Okay. So what happens often, I see it all the time, is spiritual women grow. I'm going like this. And so it gets to the point where the partner is a gap where Woman has, the woman has grown more and there's a gap. And that means there's no longer a connection. There's no longer consciousness glue holding you together. And that's when you get a problem. It sounds like you run into that, honey. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I do have another question in case we have time. Yeah. Or ask another one. Then in case others. Anyone else has any others as well. Keep going. Um. So here's my next question is if someone has their chart and they understand, they comprehend the meaning of it. Yeah. If this person is, let's say on the right path 
or if they're about to get there, does that change their lifespan or no? Uh, we, we have pre-programmed exit points. If, we just, if a soul decides, okay, I'm not learning enough, or it's got too hard or both, um, we can choose to exit at certain times. Obviously, that's not going to be revealed to the personality because you really don't want to know when you're going to, your physical body's going to die. Um, if somebody is making good progress through their contract, um, the soul, <coughs> they've been through stuff a lot quicker than the initial plan was because the soul can't tell what's going to happen. It sets you in motion by setting in the contract in place. And then what happens is that um, your free will choice as a personality determines how fast you grow. But if you wake up quick enough and do enough work, you can actually achieve a lot in the contract. Back to your earlier question, beginning. And then sometimes you get an upgrade. You get more high frequency soul components come in so you can boost the mission. Okay. So you can get a lot more done. So that means, depending on how you're doing, you may live longer, okay, simply because a higher level of mission was downloaded and it takes time for that to happen, okay? If you're, doing, if you're pretty happy and fulfilled with what you're doing, you tend to live a long time, like most conductors live to their 90s, okay? A lot of people who are doing jobs they don't like, they retire and six months later they're dead or seriously ill because they weren't doing what they like to do. Yes. So it all depends on how much, the more aligned you are, the longer you can be here. Okay. The main thing as long as life's fulfilling and hopefully a bit of fun and satisfying, that's the goal really. Um, and aligning to, aligning to your true purpose with this work is the key for making that happen. Does it help? Yes, absolutely. Okay, just and I have one more. <laughs> one more. Okay. Okay. Last one. Yeah. Um, if, when someone has a name change, it might be from adoption, marriage, divorce. When the name change is different than the birth name, should the person actually do a reading based on the name, the new name, or does that represent? And if they do, does that represent a different chapter in their life, or is it really just truly based on the birth name? Um, yeah, the book covers just birth names, but I think of the birth name is like a cake. And it has a set of frequencies. It has seven frequencies here. And if you get a, an adopted name or a married name, this is a different set of frequencies. This is like a layer of icing on the cake. That infuses into the, equi into the um, equivalent aspect in the, in the cake, in the birth name. And it has a positive, negative, or no effect. This is not covered in the book simply because it was enough to explain how the cake was baked and the cake, the cake was um, generated. So it's called an overlay. And in, this, in the second level of this work, we talk about how that effect works. How do different names you use? How does, how do the, and also this could be the birth name, say, of a partner. How does that overlay on you? We talk about all the interactions of different relationships and different names you've used through time. And that actually explains this gives you the deepest understanding of why relationships are the way they are and how to navigate them. So yeah, you look at both is basically the answer. And, it, and these are all pre-planned, the different names and the different significant relationships so that um, you can grow in a very specific way. We plan this out before we come. But the actual detail of what happens all depends on um, the free will of the personalities. Okay. Because the first level of this book basically just teaches you how the birth, the birth reading works with 22 numbers. As long as you've got a good feel for the 22 numbers and practice, then you can learn this layer, the overlay reading, the, the um, icing and the cake, or multiple layers of icing. Usually we have lots of them, like com birth name, common name we've used, name as an adult, first husband, second husband, kids it all has a big effect yeah. oh. we grow enormously from that okay relationships are all sorts of the biggest learning process we go through okay thank you this is immensely helpful any other questions anyone before i keep going
Um, I do have a placement about or a question about one of my placements for um, physical goals. I have 10 one, which I know when I've read that it says that's actually more of a spiritual. It's not it's sort of not having physical goals and it's spiritual. I was wondering if we could maybe talk a little bit more about that. Right. Let's load your name. Sure. It's Lauren Jaffe O'Malley. Current name? For current, yes. Jaffe hyphen O'Malley. Yeah, we can't put, it doesn't take hyphens. It doesn't oh, make that's sense. fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, just default to saying that. Um, and birth name is Lauren Rose Jaffe O'Malley. Rose. Mm -hmm. Like that? Oh, so still Jaffe O'Malley. Rose is the middle name. So Jaffe O'Malley is a double barreled last name. I'll put your birthday in. You're okay for me to press this? Yes. Analyze this. Take a quick look at this. So, okay. So, what's the question about the 10 one here you're concerned about? Well, just sort of curious to get more because when I've read it, it says this is, it's sort of this spiritual number that isn't physical goals in a way. It means that it's spiritual. And so I just was curious to learn a little bit more about that. Well, basically, um, this is a here about, in the physical world, you're here to be of service to others with mm -hmm. spiritual energy. So what are you up to at the moment? What do you do for work or vocation or education? So I, I haven't been working. I lost my job at, during the pandemic and I've done a ton of you know personal growth first through, um, anti-racism education, which made me start looking inward. Then I did the Enneagram. Then I kind of got into astrology and tarot and found your book all during 2020. And last year has just been sort of more of trying to figure that out. And what is it that I want to do? And now as of the last month, I'm like, okay, I, I do want to be a practitioner of some of this work, but just trying to figure out where specifically within all of this, sort of what is my niche, so to speak, of where I want to focus and continue on because I'm, again, that wanting to learn so much. I'm like, okay, well, pick something. <laughs> you can't do all of it at once. Yeah, you have to be careful. In the process of figuring that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful here not to be a perpetual learner. Yeah. Okay, because this is always expanding knowledge. You've actually got to take the learning and actually apply it in the world. Exactly. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to figure out in the sense of, because I have to learn and master whatever it is to a certain level. And so trying to figure out which are the ones I'm wanting to choose and master. And I am figuring that out. And now it's, okay, well, how much do I need to know before I can start actioning and helping people, right? What is the master of knowledge I need to have before I do that? <coughs> well, what you want to do is with all the different modalities you've tried, do you meditate, Lauren? I do like walking meditations, going okay. for a walk and listening to my music. <laughs> how, about, how about sitting still? This is saying you have a challenge with meditation here. Yeah. Yeah, because this is about overcoming denial of God and the ego. So part of your belief in spirit, part of you doesn't at the same time. Okay, so this is about I'd be still, sit still and meditate for a little bit and try in your, in your heart each of the different modalities that you're thinking of doing because mm -hmm. it's seven you can't decide so your mind is not going to be able to figure this out right okay you probably figured that out already okay yeah not working so well okay so what you do is you see what you imagine yourself being a therapist in that modality whatever it is and feel how much your heart opens mm -hmm. and the one which opens your heart the most is the modality to go with rank them because there may be several you meant to learn because they're right. probably going to work together okay exactly yeah and so i mean i can talk about the soul contract when i can't talk about your other modalities but like once you've done the training with a bit of practice in the first month or two and provided you get the work in your case you probably will won't be a problem you can deliver readings within a, a month of doing it and start earning a living wow. and making a difference with people Wonderful. Um, do people do it earlier. Okay. I would suggest you do one modality at a time. Get one established. Okay. Yes. And turn it because if you haven't been working, then you probably want to get some income coming in, don't you? 
Exactly. Well, that's the thing is I'm kind of even being like, I know that this might just start as part time because I'll need to have more income than I would maybe want to rely on this to generate. So just getting the ball rolling so that it it's there and it's, yeah. you know, and then if I have to work at something else as well, then OK. Well, that'll probably happen according to work part time at least. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but the main thing is this is about building a structure here. I just mm -hmm. say, say get, I'll give you some structure. Learn one, the modality which opens your heart the most. Uh -huh. Get it established as a business. And then have another part-time job. So you yeah. pay your bills. Okay. Are you by yourself? Yeah. We you got a partner or all? On my own. Okay. Then you sort of got to get on with it. Yeah. Okay. So get one thing that up and running. Seed it out to the world. Get it established. Get a reputation for it. Deliver high quality work. You're a perfectionist looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> so... To deliver high quality work with an open heart, okay, then people will start to come. Because manifestation wise, you want to do one service at a time. Once it's well established, then maybe go and learn something else and implement that. But don't do too many at once, otherwise you'll you'll split your manifestation energy and none of them will will will, will work properly because there's not enough of you in it. Perfect. Okay. okay. I know because I forget which number it is, but it it, you know. It does talk about, again, the ability to sort of take the different pieces of a puzzle and then find that bigger truth. And that's where I feel like I'm sort of working towards. And again, like you're saying, it's almost too much at once. You got to just pick one to start. And then as you go on, bringing those other pieces in and kind yeah. of bringing it together. Is that the seven energy or is that the four? Well, seven is about a link which unites. Uh -huh. Creating a network of like-minded people. Okay, creating an audience for yourself. Okay. So, I mean, for a spiritual entrepreneur, one product at a time, so it's well-established. It might take you a couple of years just doing one really well, then introduce a new one, or train mm -hmm. a new one. Okay. All right. You okay. must master your craft, but pick one, whatever it is. Okay. Pick the one you're most passionate about. And the main thing is to... Focus on grounding and delivering a service, not learning more. Sounds like you've done a lot of learning. Now it's time to apply it because mm -hmm. you've got to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. But agreed. your focus when you deliver it is not paying the bills. It needs to be to serve others. And then when they, people feel your own integrity and want to serve, they will come. But if they feel you just wanting to pay the bills, they won't come so easily. Yeah. Okay. So this is a discipline and trusting the flow. But if you're, if you're in total service and they feel that, they don't have a problem paying you. Yeah, that's the part I have to get my own mind around where I want to just be like, let me give it for free. And it's like well, the this energy is, this exchange, is not gonna work you know? Because they're not, they're not exchanging, they won't value it. Exactly. And you're drained and you're not going to pay the bills. Yep, I know. <laughs> that's the part I got to just get over myself. <laughs> well, here, before, you want to share things with people. But initially yeah. with the core, you'll overshare and you'll be drained. Yeah. Share about 20% of what you've you can wants to do, it'll be about right. Not the whole lot. So this is a four trying to give it away. Yeah. Okay, does that help? Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay. So I'll talk about a few other things. Okay. Um, right. So I'll talk about. This fits in with where you are. So as a as a facilitator or a therapist or a workshop, a workshop leader, this tool will give you the spiritual map of your clients' lives so you immediately understand, have a profound understanding of their issues, you can accurately guide them through all their work with you. And because it's so accurate, it builds immediate trust. And because they trust you, they'll get, you'll get faster results. It's very powerful to integrate with other therapies on an existing practice, or even starting a new practice in this case. So the training basically means you'll get a much deeper understanding of yourself and everyone around you. Um, I've explained how the structure works, three days of transmission of the numbers, two days of practice. So if you dedicate yourself to that, you should be able to get reasonably good readings by the end of the workshop with a bit of practice. 
in some cases. And we teach you how to trust your channel. There's a whole guidance team, soul contract guidance team that will plug into you. Because you're not doing it by yourself. You're the vehicle for delivering this information. Okay. So this is the experiential learning, I said. It's a body transmission. It's a DNA activation. It's about a becoming, not a knowing. Okay, that's the key thing about this training. So as long as you practice regularly, you won't lose it. It's very important to practice immediately afterwards to embed the transmission. And we give ongoing support with the Facebook practitioner group, with all the practitioners, that's peer-to-peer -peer support. Plus we do support programs. Uh, that's free, but this one here is paid for no, nominal fee, where there's four, one and a half to two hour sessions every five or six weeks after a training. So you can actually support you in actually getting up and running in your business. How to prepare charts, practical questions. Okay, what do I do now? This is happening in the business. So that runs for about, um, well, let's think three times six, 18 weeks, four or five months it runs. Okay, people find that very effective to get running. So you won't know what to ask until you actually get out there starting to do the work. Because no point training you, you guys if you're not going to actually get out there, okay? And what will people get? Because they want to know. Your customers will get a deep feeling of peace because they've heard the truth of their life. Very profound. They'll feel relieved actually there's an order to this craziness in their life. And most importantly, those who felt like victims disempowered by say a nine, they could take charge and move forward on their troop to their true purpose, no matter where they are. So it's very empowering for people. And people only find you when they're if they're ready to hear the truth of what you have to say. Okay. I, I've been giving readings for 30 odd years and it's still it's still interesting and fun to help someone move forward in their life. But also you see some pretty straight really and wonderful things going on for people. And some pretty shocking ones, but there's a way through it. So you're showing them the spiritual map of their life. You're giving targeted recommendations, which we have in there, on how to overcome the challenges they're facing right now. Okay, because in the book, you, in the book, it just gives you all the information. But we train you to tune in where someone is now, what's playing out in their contract, so you can take them from exactly where they are to move forward, so they can align to their sole purpose. It really touches people at a very deep level. It was a deep connection. And it opens you up to a lot of compassion for people because some people have really challenging lives. So that's what, that's what it allows you. So it takes you far beyond what the book is about. Yeah, I said all this already. Prepare good readings and uh, give and receive readings, you do it a couple of times. Um, so you can deliver readings after the workshop, but you gotta work on it. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? This has been quite a thorough and deep webinar, this one. You guys had some great questions. On the chat, or just switch your mics on. A bit of a question as well. Um, in terms of during the training, when you're learning to help people give them advice to their karma, I just recently had a more like uh, numerology, like Pythagorean numerology reading. So we kind of look at, for example, like the personal years that you're going to, or like the pinnacles. Would you say it's sort of similar to that in a breakdown that way, or is it almost more of like intuitive advice, or how how does that work? Part of it. Um, it, it's completely different to conventional numerology. What it's doing is it's right. showing you the latent potential of the uh -huh. core programming in the contract in, in someone's physical and energetic bodies. It's radiating out, radiating, radiating out to the matrix and creating a reality. And your job is to find out where exactly they, how they are, how far they progress through that potential. What are they facing and how to overcome it and to maximize your potential. So this is at another level altogether. Yeah. Nothing, it's not related to what conventional numerology at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, because it comes from the core frequency of God, this is why it's so powerful. It's not being diluted at all. Now, Mira, who developed this expanded work based on what Frank taught me, 
our, we did our best to maintain the core interpretations of Frank. We did not dilute it. We did not, we try to keep it very pure, but accessible. So you're getting a very pure transmission here, which is not diluted by human ego or minimal, hopefully, okay, from the beginning. So yeah, totally different, okay. Any other questions? Lynn, you got a question? Yes, I was wondering, um, people who fulfill their soul contracts that um, maybe in an abusive type of situation. So how are they looked upon in the spiritual realm? Are they, I mean, are they like, I know they're doing it, they did a bad thing, but they're looked upon as doing a good thing because that's part of the contract. Well, the abused and the abuser, it's called a karmic monad, there's a contract between the two souls to play it out. And they usually have a lot of love for each other. And the abuser agrees to, at a at soul level, to carry out the abuse at a human personality level so that the abused can claim their power back, which is the whole point of it, and come into their power. <coughs> and they'll keep going until that person claims their power. It's if they do it. It's, it's, it's tough. But that's actually the contract between the two. Okay, so they're just doing great service to the abused. It's, an, it's offering them a choice to come into their power or not. Does that help? Yeah, so I guess they're considered like doing something good, even though it may seem bad. And what did they like lie about it? Are they supposed to tell the truth about it or? Um, we don't quite get that, but say it again. Like say if someone like abuse someone else and and then they then they say they didn't do it even well that's just that's just part of the that's just part of the program really that's just part of the program oh, and, and the abused has to overcome all that stuff to get the lesson so that's why a lot of nasty stuff happens between people but it, it's all programmed in does that help then um, yeah, so I, I did the, is the abuser rewarded for that, or is that... Well, it's just part of their path. They, they will um, they're just playing out a role for the other person because often abused, the abused abuser dynamic, the two souls will have reversed the position in previous lives where the abused was the abuser, the perpetrator, and the abuser was the, the victim. And they often are balancing things out. All right, thank you. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Okay. So you're drawn to serve others and learn this work. Here's what we have on offer. We run the training twice a year in spring and autumn, and this is the spring training. Um, it's over two weekends. So the first three days, 25th, 27th of March, is to for the transmission of the 22 numbers mean. Second following weekend is 2nd to 3rd of April, where you practice. And we run at 12.30 to 8.30 UK time. So we have to stretch from California out to the Eastern Bloc and you're out to Russia. So it's a 4.30 start in California. It just means going to bed at like six in the evening. But it's, people used to fly for it. But, so people didn't mind getting up early rather than flying also when you can't fly at the moment anyway yet. 7.30 AM start in Eastern time. Okay, and in Europe, it's a 1.30 to 9.30 start. And I can teach to about 8.30 p.m. in the evening UK time. Beyond that, I can't do it. I've tried it. So we're trying to cover the entire Western Hemisphere. Um, the training cost is 652 UK pounds, about 850 US dollars, depending on the exchange rate. If you're interested in coming, the deposit is 250 pounds UK, or about 325 US. And you can reg register at soulcontractreadingtraining.com. Okay. If you have any questions, you can just email me. You've got my email address there. So that, that's the Western Hemisphere training. If you're in Asia, because we have people there, or you want to get up early in Europe, um, we have running one running earlier. Okay. And it runs from 10th to the 14th of March. And it starts at 6 a.m. in the UK or 7 a.m. in um, Europe. And then uh, Middle East is about 10 a.m. India is 11.30 a.m. Malaysia. Because we have people from all over the place. Two o'clock in Malaysia. 
Hong Kong, Western Australia, three, three o'clock in Japan. Eastern Australia, where most of the guys are, is 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. In New Zealand, 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. So these guys were asking me, can you make it a bit earlier? So I said, okay, I'll get up early, which I, I often do. So that's the other option, that's, that's a few weeks earlier. We find UK people tend to, who are early risers tend to come to this one as well. Okay, so that's, that's there if you want it. Um, any final questions? No, okay. So the video will get out in a few days time once, once, once it's rendered and we have time to process it. Um, thank you for coming. Thanks for the great questions, guys. It was very lively. All right, hope, I hope that helped. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, we appreciate you. Yeah, take care. Bye, Bye everyone.